So guys, I accidentally recorded my intro on time lapse, but I left it in because I thought it was funny. But today, guys, we're making a hot dog fork. Stay tuned. Okay. All right, guys, so we're using quarter inch round bar. And we're going to put a couple inches off of the anvil because we're going to be doing an eye bolt. And I am just making a 90 degree bend. Hard to do with the camera. Let me grab my measure and I'll tell you exactly how much I bent over the edge. So I bent about three and a half inches over the edge, okay? And the reason why I did that is because when I make the eye bolt, and I'll go ahead and admit guys, when I make an eye bolt, I get it right probably three out of 10 times where it's perfect. But whenever I make the eye bolt, we bend it back and then we're gonna roll it over on itself over the horn. So I'm coming over the horn of the anvil. We'll go about here. And then I'm just going to start hammering it around. Make sure everything stays good and straight. But work your way down the anvil, the horn, until you start making this C shape. And then you're going to flip it over and start hammering back towards yourself. Make something like that right there. here if you want to start closing it up more just slowly tap it and then work keep working it around your anvil or around your horn i apologize guys i think i'm going to leave it a little open like that i like that design straighten everything up now i'm going to quench this and now we're going to work on the other end Alright guys, so we're going to flatten about three inches of our material. So I'm going to move over here on my anvil and find about three inches, which is right there, because it's a double horned anvil. And I'm going to make a small mark so I know I'm flattening that much material. Now you can do this with a center punch, uh, you can do this with just about anything, and you can actually go more than three inches. You can make your tines about as big as you want them to be. But I wouldn't go more than probably four inches, maybe five inches, just because they could get weak when they're going over the fire because they're going to be a little thin. So I'm going three inches for the tines. And now I'm going to flatten it, and then we're going to cut it on the bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a chisel if you uh, or a hacksaw. But try to cut as center as possible when you go to cut, guys. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to find where that mark is. Right there. Now I'm just going to flatten this material out and make it wider. So I'm just going to draw it out wider a little bit. But I need to keep some meat there because we are going to be forging some tines out of this. Alright, so I'm going to stop right there. So we're just flattening that area. Now, I'm gonna let it cool down and anneal. Sometimes even with mild steel, you can still kind of get a little hardness to it and it won't cut good. So just let it cool down. It'll only take a couple minutes. Once it loses all of its color and it's really getting somewhat cool to get close to, then just cool down the rest of it. Just cool the touch. As we've done in past videos, guys. Just straightening everything up.
Okay guys, so I'm using my hardy tool to open up these tines. If you don't have a hardy tool, just heat it up, use a pair of pliers, tap one side open a little bit, tap the other side open a little bit. But I'm just using the hardy tool just to get mine started. And you wanna bend this open into a Y shape. I'm gonna straighten this one tine out. And then I'm going to flatten it down. I want it as flat as I can possibly get it, okay guys? I don't want it to be offset. Make it like a T now. I'll tap this other side down. Now at this point, you do not work your material anything other than hot. You will crack one of your tines. Now, if you're using some thicker material to make a, your hot dog fork, you might draw out your tines a little bit. These, I'm just gonna roughly shape and round them out and put points on them because they're already, the length I want them, and they're already thin enough as I want them. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna work on my, my tip. You see that I've got the material straight up and down. Now, I lay it down. All I'm doing is working two sides and making a rough point on this. I don't want it to be super sharp. One, especially if kids are using it, but if you're just stabbing hot dogs and marshmallows with this, it doesn't have to be super sharp. And now all I'm doing is just rounding out the edges, flip it around, have it on the other side, just get it roughly rounded out so you get your time like that, okay? Now, if you're just tapping and rounding out, you can you can hammer on it while it's a little cold. You do not want to do any shaping or anything while it's cold. It'll break right here in this joint. All right, let's work on the other side. All right, guys, so let's do the other side. There we go. And it's a little awkward to hammer on, but once you get used to it, Kind of moving it around it, it gets not so bad just because you're messing with such a long piece and i have seen if you are drawing okay guys so if you're drawing your tines out you can work on one side however you need to bend it back up flip it around then work on the other side so you get it to where you want it and you can do it while you're doing the rounding process too but try to get everything back to the T-shape and flat. Like that right there, guys. All right, the next process is a little tricky if you don't have an anvil, but it, it is doable. All right, guys, so this next part, like I was saying, is a little tricky if you don't have an anvil, but if you have a piece of pipe, clamp it in a vise or even if you got two people working have somebody hold it for you hold the pipe and you're going to hammer your tines around it and this will all what this is going to do is basically give your your hot dog fork a little bit more uh shape and dimension instead of just having two kind of straight tines so i'm going to go about halfway and then I'm gonna hammer down now horns are not perfectly round so I'm gonna flip it get about as close as I can to where I was at and then hammer the other side down now I'm gonna tap the edge right here close it up some it up a tiny bit more and there's your tines for your hot dog fork see it there we go now you can sit and tweak these for a very long time and end up breaking one i generally get it as close as i possibly can and then tweak a tiny bit and then just leave it alone because you'll see the tiny imperfections but no one else will 
Now, right here in the middle, because this is just a plain Jane bar, I'm gonna put what's called a barrel twist in the center, roughly about right here. So I'm gonna flatten out this section in the middle. All right, guys. I forgot to film this part, so I'm just straightening everything up. You don't wanna get this too thin either, but I only flattened about an inch, inch and a half of this material. And I went not super thin with it. So when I twist this up, it's gonna make a little bit of a twist right here. And it just gives a little bit more dimension. You don't have to do it. If you're using square bar when you're making these, then you can uh, put twists in various spots, backwards twists, and they look really good. barrel twist guys just something simple I'm gonna go maybe one more revolution on it sorry I made you see sick I like that a little bit better right there all right guys so let's get real for a minute and talk about what we learned today well we made one of the funnest campfire tools you can make you will be the talk of the campground when you bust these bad boys out because most people have the little flimsy ones they get from the store, you're gonna have one that you could probably fight off the zombie apocalypse with. So this is also one of the funnest items I liked making whenever we used to teach the Boy Scouts because it was something easy for them to make and it was something tangible for them that they could t use for years. They could even pass it down to their kids. Their kids could pass it down to their kids and the stories behind it would probably grow. And I know y'all are just looking at it going, John, that's just a hot dog fork. But really, it's something handmade. And whenever you get something passed down to you that's handmade, that you can say, my dad made this, your grandpa made this when he was your age in Boy Scouts, kids get excited learning about those things, or at least I did. I'm going to talk about care real fast, guys, and then we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of what we did. You're going to care for this the same way you care for cast iron. So you're going to put it in a fire, if it's rusty, brush it off really good with a wire brush. If you need to use sandpaper, use a really fine sandpaper before you put it in the fire and clean all the uh, excess surface rust off. And then you're going to put an oil on it, whatever kind of oil you want to use for your hot dog fork. I use a canola oil but you can use any kind of not oil that you would, same oil that you would use to take care of your cast iron. Um, let's get in the meat and potatoes of it, guys. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> let's get in the meat and potatoes of it, guys. All right, so let's talk about your tines first. This joint right here will be an area that will break if you're not careful. If you work your material too cold, that section will snap. If it breaks, you've got two options, and this falls under the motto of the shop. There are no mistakes, it's a design change. You can either cut off both tines, sand it down where it broke so everything's clean, and re-flatten the area, recut, and make new tines. Or you can make it into a longer meat turner, and I have done this quite a few times. Where the area where it broke at, sand it down very well to where you know there's no cold shut then form this end into a bigger meat turner and brand it as a cast iron or not cast iron a campfire meat turner so they can get away from the fire and still flip meat over and steaks if they're cooking on an open fire we have done that a few times i've done it quite a few times and people like them being this long because if they are cooking over an open fire, they're not right up on it. They can actually get away from it and turn it, especially people that are nervous about cooking open fire. But that joint is one joint that will break super quick if you work your material anything cooler than an orange heat. You can tap a tiny bit just to straighten, but don't do any forging, don't do any bending because it will break in that section. Also, I like using eye bolts on these because they hang very flat. 
and with the eyeball guys put out more material than what you think and i said this in the video and i'm going to reiterate it these turn out for me about one two three times every 10 i make because i never put enough material over the edge and i always have to redo it so put your material over the edge and then go a little bit extra you can always cut off excess or just make a bigger loop but you want it to look right. These are very simple items, so any flaws or any major mess ups, people will notice them and it won't appeal to them. So you wanna to try to keep them as clean as possible. I'm gonna talk a little more about the tines having a little bit of a mess up and people not noticing, but you will in just a minute. But remember, go over the edge of the anvil, bend it 90 degrees, and then come over to the horn. If you don't have a horn, you can use a piece of pipe. If you don't have access to either one, you can bend this over like you're making a J hook, but make sure you angle up as you're going and really work on that, getting it in this uniform circle shape. Now you can close these up. I normally leave them open because people could take them and slide them just over a hook and it hooks in and they can take them off easier too. I also like my hot dog forks to sit flat when they're hanging. So as you can see, this is one straight line. I've seen where the, the tines are turned out like this. I don't like that for two reasons. One is when it's hanging up, it's, if it's hanging against a tree, you have a sharp object pointing out. So if a kid runs by, they're more likely to get caught by it. Two, if it's laying on the ground, it lays completely flat. So if someone steps on it, it's not gonna crush your tines down. It might bend them up a little bit, but it's not gonna crush them in. And it's less likely to break. But those are my two main reasons why I like it to set flat and it looks more uniform when it's sitting on a table. Now, let's talk about aesthetics and what people notice and what people don't. If your eye is off a little bit for your handle, no one will ever see that. You will, I notice my little flaws all the time. On your tines, if you look, this looks like this tine is wider than this tine. To me, this one has a little bit more of a bend in it. This one's a little sharper. No one will ever see that but you. You are the only one that will notice this because you will be your worst critic. Don't tweak too much. You can break it. And understand, it's hand, for people when they see it, they see that it's handmade. Especially blacksmithing, they expect for some reason some imperfections i don't know why but they do because they like it having that handmade look so if one tine is bent in really far they're going to see it if it's off a little bit like one's longer than the other they will notice that but just because one side might have a little bit more of a curve to it than the other or this is a little straighter than this side or whatever people don't really notice those details you will so don't be super hard on yourself and understand it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. You can make it as perfect as you want, but you'll tweak for two hours for somebody to come by and be like, oh, that looks cool, and never see anything that was imperfected on it. I also put some kind of twist or something in the material to make it to where it doesn't just look like a straight bar of steel. Now, sometimes I'll put a twist here and I'll put a twist up here just to break up how straight it is. I am very big on not super straight lines on some of my stuff because I want, don't want it to look factory made. Now I want it to be straight so far as there's no bends in it, but I don't want it to be like just a straight bar all the way across on both sides. If you're trying to sell them, if you're just using them at your house for you, make them however you want to. Make them as fancy as you want, make them as simple as you want. But I always try to put something in it to show that it was more handmade than just this end and this end that I took time to work on the inner material too. But guys, this is a very simple and fun project. This is a great project for kids. Like I said, when we taught the Boy Scouts, they were ages from like nine or 10 all the way up to like 16 and everybody enjoyed it. But guys, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you on the next one. God bless. Keep hammering.